There's a lot we don't know about COVID-19. Uh, it's only been a couple of years since it was discovered, a little less actually. Uh, and one of those things that we're learning more about is what's known as long COVID. I'm gonna to talk to Dr. Anna Banerjee of the University of Toronto about that. And so welcome to the interview, Anna. Oh, thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Well, let's start with the basics. What, what is long COVID? So co long COVID are symptoms of COVID that persist after the infection are, is gone. And they usually, you know, there's different definitions as far as time period. Some people, people say, well, that persists beyond six weeks or eight weeks. Um, often with these symptoms, there's a whole constellation of symptoms that can be part of long COVID. Um, it, it could be things like uh, brain fog, fatigue, muscle ache, shortness of breath, uh, irregular heartbeats, uh, chest pain, a joint pain, muscle ache. So in typically it's a healthy person beforehand, they get COVID, they may have more severe COVID or mild COVID, but then after that it's COVID usually it might resolve a bit or may not. And then, then after a week or two, it goes into long COVID. And I've had friends who have had it and they've said, uh, I asked them how, how to describe it. And they said, well, imagine the, you know, the worst flu you've ever had and multiply that by 10. Uh, and I don't think they had the most severe uh, form of it. And so all of the, is it just symptoms they would have had during COVID, you know, like the shortness of breath and, and all those sorts of things, or are there other associated uh, ailments like uh, heart problems, organ problems? So it could be one or the other. It could be someone has average COVID symptoms, mild symptoms, and then a few weeks later, they start having chest pain. They start having shortness of breath, which they didn't have before. Uh, they could have uh, the body aches starting up, the brain fog starting. So it could be someone with moderate uh, COVID, those symptoms, or someone who's actually very, very sick with COVID, and they end up in the hospital, or they're bedridden with COVID. And then uh, then a lot of the symptoms um, continue or transform into something uh, that persists. And so someone, usually the fevers last for a week or two, and then the fevers go away. But a lot of the other symptoms, um, you know, over a period of time continue or, or uh, change around, but the symptoms never really go away. So they, from when they were really sick, they never fully recover. Do we know what percentage of uh, COVID sufferers are likely to get long COVID? I've read 10%, but I, I'm wondering if there's been any, uh, any studies recently that uh, have a, a better idea. So I think it depends on the age group that you're looking at, um, the, the, the population you're looking at, what services they had, how you're measuring it. But I've read anywhere between two and 14%, but 10% is fairly commonly uh, quoted. And a lot of people, they may not realize that they have some symptoms, um, you know, cause they, they're maybe relatively mild, but they're, they're from COVID and they persist for a period of time. Now, uh, on my social media feeds, parents are are the are really worried this time around with the Delta variant and children becoming in more and more infected. Uh, they worry about long COVID in their kids. What can you tell us about that? So the um, long COVID is um, it tends to occur in the older kids more the teenagers and the older you are, the more adult like you are, the more likely you're you're like to likely to get long COVID. So for the young kids, like five, six-year-olds, usually they don't get long COVID. They can get other things. They can get inflammatory syndromes. They can get pneumonia. They could have symptoms of COVID for that last for a while, but long COVID is not as common as in adults. Um, most kids will get COVID. You may not even know they have COVID. They may have mild symptoms. They may have just a runny nose fever. Um, and so it's really uncommon to have the serious conditions in these children, but it can happen. And so, you know, in Canada, I think we've had about 17 or 18 deaths due to COVID. Um, and most more the older teenager group, but we've had some younger kids as well get quite sick with it. Um, and we've had about uh, 
I can't remember the exact number, but just under 200 kids in the ICU and about 1600 kids uh, hospitalized. And I think that's an underestimate because the test for COVID is not very accurate. And so, you know, for, for a lot of these kids that end up in the hospital, they may have had symptoms like a week or so before, but then they end up getting sicker a little bit later, but their tests are negative. So they're not counted as a case of COVID when they, they actually have, do have COVID. Ah, I see. Um, now, if let's say that you're an adult and you've you've had COVID, uh, what are, and and so maybe a 10% chance of getting long COVID, how likely is the chance that you'll get a debilitating case of long COVID, like say where you can't uh, go to work for a period of time? That's not that common, but I mean, I, I do work in the long COVID clinic, and so I do see people. I see athletes. I see people that were working busy living their lives and all of a sudden they can't work anymore. So it's, it's not that common, but I mean, it's common enough. COVID, you know, the long-term symptoms of COVID, you know, a lot of these people had symptoms last year in March, April, when they weren't testing and they didn't realize that, you know, it was long COVID. We didn't know much about COVID, a long COVID at that point in time, but a lot of these people um, some of them have recovered in the past while I've been working with some of them and many of them actually after a long period of time start getting better but there are some people where where you know they still they lie in bed most of the day now um, over the weekend we learned that uh, two uh, Edmonton Oiler hockey players had a, long, a form of long COVID I guess they have heart conditions and I, I I'm going to try to pronounce it and you'll forgive me if I get it wrong because I probably will. My, myocarditis? That's right. Oh, well, lucky me. Uh, so anyway, uh, but unfortunately for them, uh, so their season is ruined. How now, That sounds like a fairly serious uh, condition and they were young, fit uh, men in their 20s, I think. And uh, so is is that on the more severe end of, of long, uh, long COVID? There can be uh, all kinds of symptoms that have significant consequences. Myocarditis, so it's inflammation of the muscle of the heart, is one of them. You can have pericarditis, inflammation around the, the heart, uh, and that can lead to chest pain. It can re lead to irregular heartbeat. There's something called POT syndrome where you get up suddenly and your heartbeat goes from normal to you know 200. Uh, but also, so that's, that can be debilitating, but also the brain fog, the, the ability, the lack of ability to concentrate. And, uh, and then you can have severe muscle ache or severe joint pain, severe fatigue where you can't get out of bed. So it can affect almost any uh, system in your body. And you could have, and the thing with the long COVID, often you have these episodes where, you know, you're, you feel almost like you're getting better, you start doing some exercise and all of a sudden you feel right back to square one. So for a lot of people, then they are afraid to get out of bed. They're afraid to do activities because they don't want to trigger these episodes. And I've heard people with long COVID describe things I've never heard before in medicine. Like I have pain in one specific part of my skin or this part of my head or it's, and I think that uh, it's very easy to dismiss it when you've heard it again and again, people saying these, these very unusual symptoms or constellation of symptoms, you say, yeah, I believe you. And I think the hardest part about long COVID, especially for the people that had it in um, March, April last year when they weren't testing, is they don't have a test that's positive that says they have long COVID. So people sort of people come to judgment. Well, how do we know this is COVID? Maybe you're just tired. Maybe you're just lazy. Maybe you're depressed. Maybe it's something else. Or you know, so there's a lot of um, judgment for some of these people, and I think for some of them, when you say no, this clearly is long COVID they feel a sense of relief that it's not just them and their attitude, but it, they have an actual medical condition from, from COVID. Well, last question, Anna. Uh, where is the science on long COVID? Uh, are we just getting started or uh, have scientists made some progress in terms of identifying causes and, and symptoms and you know that sort of thing? Oh, there's lots of research ongoing. Um, and uh, there are lots of, because COVID has affected so many populations all around the world and groups of people have gotten together to study. So, so there's a lot of information we know about long COVID more than we did before. But then again, 
people have had it only for a maximum of a year and a half. So what's going to happen in two years? What's a long-term prognosis in five years, 10 years? Is this a lifelong thing or will it eventually get better? So there's a lot of questions that still remained unanswered and uh, that, that we'll need to continue to look at and study to have a better idea of COVID. But that being said, a lot of the people that had long, long hauler COVID, you know, for a year, year and a half, many of them have started getting better. And I think when you start, uh, you know, exercising, eating better, trying to sleep better, doing all those basic things, but really trying to move your body and do some more exercise because there's a lot of deconditioning that occurs, a lot of them do get better. So that, that makes me hopeful. Excellent. Thank you very much for your insights, Anna. Really appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you.